Welcome to part 3 of the 2020 Meme Review. Sometimes the caption makes all the difference. Listen to me, Floyd. You're tripping balls right now. For the love of God, put down the gun and we can talk this through. So basically, this meme is this angry-looking bear that looks like he's about to attack this guy with a gun. But the caption is making it seem like the bear isn't going to attack the guy and he's trying to talk to the guy into not attacking him. It seems a bit dubious and a bit ridiculous, but sure. I like this one because the bear doesn't have an angry expression. Uh-huh. So it could go either yeah. way. Yeah. And, and if you it look ha- under the meme caption, and this, this image looks like, you know, it's like the cover of like a Hardy Boys book, like that kind of illustration. And if you look underneath uh, the meme text, it, I can't read all of it, but it looks like it says something about the exciting, true adventure of a ferocious giant panda, and the bear does look like a poorly drawn panda bear. So, for one, it would be pretty ridiculous for this person to encounter a giant panda and to shoot an endangered animal like that, but then, of course, if the guy is just hallucinating and it's not a panda at all, that's another story. But, but yeah, just the whole idea of like, oh, this, this is what this appears to be. And then the idea of like, no, it actually could be something completely different. Uh, anyway, I, I found it if, entertaining. If you're, if you're curious, the part that you can't read says in this issue. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, so like an old timey, like magazine yeah. or something. I, I decided to look it up. It's from a, a comic book series called Heroic Comics. Ah. Uh, it costs 10 cents. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it's issue number number 35, I think that says. Yeah. Um, so I take it you've seen this before, and that was not research you did in the past minute. No, I researched it in the past 30 seconds. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did a Google search for exciting adventure of a giant panda, and then I went to images, and boom, there it was. There we go. <laughs> it's impressive. Nice. I wanted to know what it said. (laughs) Remember how I said I'll do anything for $200? You know I was talking about sex, right? Yeah, well, not everyone can get what they want. Now stop complaining and finish those taxes. (laughs) Oh, man, if you're paying $200 for someone to do your taxes, you're not doing something right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 Well... Okay, so here's my theory. So, um, of course, you know, prostitutes, like, are running a business, but it's on the black market because it's illegal in most places. And so this guy is also running a black market business, so he needs someone with black market business expertise to cook his books for him. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just love the idea of, like, I'll do anything for $200 having one thing in mind and the other person's like, oh, how about something completely different? Yeah, here are my taxes. Have, have fun suffering. <laughs> I mean, you know, can, can you imagine anyone short of Trump paying, paying a hooker 200 bucks to do their taxes? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, I could. I mean, that's probably why he doesn't want to release his tax return because, you know, he always has hookers do his taxes. Yeah, he has an accountant fetish. (laughs) Yeah. Well, they'd probably be more honest than the people Trump would be tempted to hire otherwise, so. Yes, that is true. Uh, I've served the hooker before anyone in the Trump administration. So I am looking ahead at the next meme, and I feel like this next meme just cut straight to my soul as a failed grad student. Oh, I can't wait to get there. (laughs) I want to see this. Yeah, let's go to the next one. Sometimes I forgot how to spell a word, so I changed the whole sentence to avoid using it. Yep. Yep. As a reporter, same thing. (laughs) I uh, cut straight to my soul. February sucks. It's a terrible month. It's the worst month. Your your month your month February. should be assault, bastard. <laughs> February is awful. I don't care. It's a terrible month. The worst month. 
February is the worst month, okay? The month should be easy to spell, okay? February is a communist conspiracy against me to make me look stupid because I can't spell it, okay? February should be something easy to spell, like three or something, okay? We should not have months that are hard to spell, okay? I, I also really identify with this because one of the things that I do in my spare time is I write stories uh-huh. and stuff like that. And this happens to me all the time. I'm constantly rewriting things because I forget how to spell a word or I'm trying to include a word that I'm not completely sold on, on the, um, the use of it. And so it's just like, nuke it all, start again. <laughs> yep. And the worst thing in the world is when it's a word that you're spelling so incorrectly that Microsoft Word can't save you. Yep. <laughs> and, 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 you, and you, can't, you can't Google it either because you're spelling it so incorrectly that Google can't save you. Like, what if, I haven't gotten to that point. Conspiracy against me and specifically me. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm kind of like the, the other way around, where like I don't really have this problem, but like what I'll do is I'll just start a sentence, and then the construction of the sentence will be so weird that like I'll I'll be like doing these wild acrobatics to try and make the sentence it make sense rather than just scrapping it and starting over again like I should. <laughs> you just you just determined to see it through. <laughs> yeah. Like there there has to be a way to end the sentence and have it work. Uh-huh. So so like I'm I'm actually mm-hmm. I'm a mixture between both. I do that sometimes too, where I'm just so utterly determined to use this specific set of words that I will see it through no matter what. I I'm, I'm like that sometimes too. <laughs> so so yeah, like def- definitely is spelled definitely, which is, is one of those things was like, what? Why? <laughs> you know, or what? or necklace is spelled necklace. How was I supposed to know that? <laughs> it, it, it's funny that you brought up the word uh, definitely uh-huh. because I can't spell definitely, uh-huh. but I will do definitively. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I uh, stupid little things like that where it's like oh no I, they're they're so similar like I should be able to do definitely right uh-huh. but for some reason I can't but definitively boom I got it like yeah. no problem makes no sense <laughs> basically it's all a lie and language is stupid and I feel like if, if, if I want to actually succeed in this world, I just need to create my own language that is easy to understand and doesn't involve big words. That would be double plus good. Exactly. To quote, to quote Zach from back in the day, world of speech. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, pro- some, sometimes, yes. Okay. Mm. Good. Never do anything you wouldn't uh, want to explain to the paramedics. That's good life advice. Yep. I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, Keanu Reeves can't be any worse than Trump, right? <laughs> okay, so I didn't even get a chance to read that one. That that we progressed so quickly, uh, but but yeah, just, just the whole idea of like. Oh yeah, we jump dimensions, and like, there's some some unexpected person as president that's not Donald Trump. Oh great, this is be- so much better. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yeah, like, like, fairly nice and honest, as opposed to mean and a constant liar, <laughs> even if he has no experience. Uh-huh. I mean, we've already we, we've already kind of proved that you don't need experience to be in the White House. <laughs> I mean, I actually have the meme we should be reacting to. You may not be able to fix stupid, but the MAGA hats sure make it much easier to identify. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, next one. Okay, so this is in the Country Balls uh, comics. Um, A bunch of people kind of create them. In this one, you have the America Ball uh, looking at the Bill of Rights, putting it in a box looking at the Statue of Liberty and a 
you know, defend freedom poster and the flag, and then go to the next one because I had I had to split it into two slides since it's so narrow. Um, and there he's packing up all of it in the box, and he says, "Well, I'm going now. I left some cheeseburgers in the fridge. If you get hungry, uh, good luck, I guess. And oh yeah, I'll be back someday. Don't worry." As he puts on like a Russian uh, hat, and then. Uh, it says, yeah. leader of the free world in a very, very terrified Germany is like, oh, crap. That's a, uh, I that's mean, a Canadian aviator hat, I believe. Oh, okay. It has a Russian flag on it, I think. Oh, it does? Okay, I can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> so that, make, that makes sense. Uh-huh. I mean, I, 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 I think, I think what, what would be more terrifying... To most people with Germany as leader of the free world, not not because Germany would do this now, but, you know, Germany doesn't have a very good history of trying to, you know, form broad form broad coalitions and trying to lead people. So I, I think Europe might get a little bit scared if Germany is all of a sudden the leader of the free world, supposedly again. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we, we've tried that twice and it hasn't worked well. Well, I I'm, mean, America's uh, broken. It doesn't work anymore. Yes, that's true. But are we are we really going to try Germany again? Third time's the charm, maybe. No, Ang- Ang- know, Angela Merkel. Merkel is one of the best world leaders in terms of welcoming refugees and being moral and democratic. There, there was a Der Spiegel headline. Der Spiegel is a, a newspaper in Germany that said, "Leader of the free world meets Donald Trump." You know, the idea that Donald Trump really isn't the leader of the free world because he's he doesn't believe in democracy. Uh, because he supports so many authoritarians because they're authoritarian. I'm not saying that I don't trust Angela Merkel. I'm saying that Germany in a, in a position of power might make some might make some Europeans with long memories a little bit nervous. Uh-huh. Yeah. Of course, they, they've, they've already kind of had a little to do bit. that in Europe with the, with the financial crisis where they had to like pretty much bail out like a bunch of the countries and southern europe and like germany kind of had to lead the way because britain didn't want to and germany is like the biggest economy in europe well yeah especially, especially now with now brexit that, now, now, yeah because yeah, now, now now that now that the uk isn't in the european union anymore germany pretty much is the european union yeah because france is kind of shaky so go germany go go german heritage i should i should i should move to germany and you know full, full, fully embrace my german heritage Third Reich's the charm. Because, you know, Germ- Germany is proof that, hey, maybe you should maybe you should memorialize the terrible people in your past. Well, hell, they belong in America then. Probably. I don't know. That's basically what, what we're doing. <laughs> Facts are a lie and the truth doesn't matter anymore. So, you know. Okay. All right. Next, next slide. So we have the Venn diagram of... Uh, Fork, spoon, and knife, uh, with the spork, spife, knork, and splayed. And some of the comments below it are, I love Venn diagrams, this made me uncomfortable, and don't bring a splayed to a knork fight. I mean, this is just, what is this? Why is this? I, I, ha- I, I, I am not sure why this exists or what is the point of this. Wait, so... Spoons, forks, and knives are separate things. <laughs> Stop trying to combine them, damn it. Forks are for communists. But if you, if you look if you look on this diagram, this this brings up a question that's very relevant because you know we we've all lived in Manhattan and been on the A State campus where there's the sculpture uh, that they refer to as a spork. But if you look at this diagram, it really might actually be a splayed. <laughs> I mean, Wait, where did they get the name Blade from? Because that doesn't like that. Like it has where'd the where'd the L A Y D come from? Those aren't in the other letters. Shouldn't it be like a splore for a splike? Sorry, I'm just trying to take this but, seriously. Sure. But but but, but I I th- I, th- I think that fundamentally misses the point of we have a knife, a fork, and a spoon. All are separate things. All, all should but continue spoon, to be separate things. When you put spoons and forks together, the, 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 world apart. the world falls apart. The world falls apart. Forks are alive. What about, what about like Asia where they use chapsticks like that works? 
Yeah, because but 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 you don't you don't you don't you don't you don't see people trying to combine spoons and chopsticks because that would just be weird. Yeah. Chopsticks yeah. are one eating yeah. utensil. A fork is one eating utensil. A spoon is one eating utensil. A knife is one eating utensil. When you start putting those things together, the world just falls apart. Uh, so you're saying that those things were optimized over like many generations yes. and yes. yes. And for for and 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 chopsticks have been optimized for the food that you're using them to eat, whereas spoons, forks, and knives have been optimized for the food you are using them to eat. If you put a fork together, it fails as both a fork because the little prongs aren't far enough to properly function as a as a fork, and it fails as a spoon because a lot of the stuff that's supposed to be in the bottom of the spoon falls out the fork part. So a fork fails that's on every level. Forks suck. It's, forks it's basically. Awful. The, the only thing that it's good for is the thing that it was designed for, which is the KFC Famous Bowl. And other than that, it's completely worthless. Because the KFC Famous Bowl, the reason it works is because it's a bowl of chunky mush that isn't liquid enough to fall through the tines, but isn't solid enough that you need to stab it with the ineffectual tines. But even then, a spoon yes. would probably work better. Because, and a fork would uh, because, like, in high school, like, the only utensil they'd give us, unless we had chili, was a fork. And so you learned to eat everything with a fork, even, like, applesauce or jello. Like, you can eat those things with a fork, too. Even though it's kind of dumb. The, uh, the spice is gangster as hell, though. I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, it, it, it's a beautiful design. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it, it it just wouldn't work. Like, and 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 like and like, and like the Knork doesn't really work either, or the Nork. It just, it and just like doesn't work. And like the Splayed is a cool design too. It just once again like doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, because the the, the Splayed is the even worse fork because the Splayed you still have you still have ineffectual pines, so you're gonna fail as a fork. And you're gonna fail even harder as a spoon because you don't have a you don't have the little bowl thing to hold anything. So it's just yeah. going to be a fork that doesn't work at all, that serves no function as a spoon. And it, what, what, where, where, where's the knife part of this blade? Is it the end? How's the end no, actually gonna cut? If the knife actually is the end, I, where are you gonna hold it? I think it's supposed to be on the outside edge of the uh, the fork part. That that would be my guess. Is if it was more rigid, so you could cut with it. But yeah. if, if it's on the if it's on the outside edge of the fork part, you're going to get to the same problem that you have with every plastic fork. Which I'm assuming this blade is probably going to be a plastic utensil, and the tines are going to break off the first time you try to use it. Yep. <laughs> so the blade is the blade is the spork, but made even worse. How can you make forks worse? Forks are literally useless. I don't get it. Forks are useless. Okay. Why? Next slide. <laughs> Forks are terrible. Okay. Well, yeah, and 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 you know the reason Avril Lavigne is forever young. You know, I'm, I'm going to toss out some conspiracy stuff right here, just because. You know, oh, wonderful. There is an internet conspiracy that Avril Lavigne actually died in the early 2000s and was replaced by a double. <laughs> <laughs> and I came across that conspiracy because I was going down the Paula's dead rabbit hole, which there's this conspiracy that Paul McCartney died in a car accident in 1966 when it was replaced by a double. The Avril Lavigne conspiracy might actually be even weirder, but yeah. So, to like, I think a lot of women can look fairly young for a long period of time until they hit menopause. Then they age very quickly. And so, like, my guess is that she just has genetics that are like that. Um, but, but yeah. And she probably also, like, has somebody doing an incredible job on her makeup. Oh, yeah, totally. Styling. Masahiro Sakurai, the guy who makes Smash Brothers, like, if you, if you take a picture of him from, like, back in 1990 when he was working on uh, Kirby games, and then you, you put it next to, like, a picture of him from this year of releasing DLC from Smash Brothers, the dude gets younger the older he gets. <laughs> it's insane. In this one, you, you have a comparison of heterosex and lesbian sex. And in the heterosex, you have guy comes, girl comes maybe, 
and then sleep and or someone leaves. And then lesbian sex is, is this sex? Oh, I think we're having sex now. Orgasm one of seven. Delicate cuddling, hand-holding, time traveling. Someone gets up and gets food. I thought it was over, but I guess we're going again. And ended by distracted by cat pet. Now, I cannot attest to the accuracy of, of this assessment of the um, intensity curves of, of different kinds of sex. But I just love the idea of like, oh yeah, it, it works very differently and here's how like it could work differently. Uh, I'm very amused by that idea. The heterosex one ends in four minutes, apparently, uh, according to this graph. <laughs> yep. And and the lesbian sex one is cut off, so you can't see that 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 timeline there for how long that one takes. I'm guessing it's much longer. Yeah. But but yeah, I, I just like the directed by cat. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> I like how we don't get to see the timeline for the lesbian one because iFunny.co really had to put their advertisement on it. <laughs> yep. I think that's Rather probably than... kind of the bit. No, I've, I've, I've seen websites like this all the time. Every time they, they upload a picture, even whether they just find it online, they put it on their website, they slap their logo on it. So when you go sharing it to your friend, they go, oh, iFunny, I'll find more funny stuff like this there. But what they could have done, what they should have done, is just add 20 freaking pixels to the bottom of the image and then slap your logo on there. Yep. I do image editing. It's not that hard. Yeah. <laughs> and there is yeah, those bastards. So much. <laughs> yeah, those bastards. Or I should say they're temp workers because that's probably who it is. It's like, oh, yeah, you're not paid to think. You're just paid to, like, be disposable. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, we'll, we'll do one more in this part. I don't know who this dog is or why he is banned from this park, but he certainly seems like a lot of fun. And so you see a dog riding a skateboard, holding a glass of wine, smoking a cigarette, uh, with, with, with a no sign, presumably saying that, hey, no dogs in the park, no drinking, no smoking, or skateboarding. But instead of having them as separate signs, just like, let's mail make it one. Also no. the fact that that the head seems disconnected from the body. I can only assume that that means that it's wearing some kind of article of clothing, so it's probably wearing a suit. So I'm going to name this dog James Bork. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so uh, I, I, ha I have something that, that makes me angry. And, you know, I talked about this on the last podcast, but you still see this, and it just breaks my brain. And every time I see this, I feel the strong need to yell at someone over this. And sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. But there is nothing, nothing more frustrating than when you're in a park and someone has a huge dog, and you're not in a dog park, and, you know, it's one of those things where, like, yeah, you can have your dog in the park, but they don't have their dog on a leash. And then their dog runs up to you, and they're like, oh, don't worry, nothing's going to happen. Like, I don't care that nothing's going to happen to me. Have your dog on a leash. Be a decent human being. What, what if, oh, what if that dog runs up to some kid and knocks the kid over? What if your dog runs up the middle of the street and gets hit by a car? What? Have your dog on a leash. Be a decent human being. It's not that hard. I don't even I don't, have to I don't, go to a I park for that. I don't care if your dog runs up to me. I don't care if your dog runs up to me. What I do care about is if your dog runs in the middle of the street and causes an accident. Have your dog on a leash. Not that difficult. Or if you don't have your dog on a leash, go to a dog park. I, I have a feeling that this particular dog could probably handle not being on a leash if it's coordinated enough to smoke and drink while on a skateboard. <laughs> He's a secret agent. I mean, maybe. Maybe. Fork. <laughs> maybe. This dog, maybe. Other dogs, no. Get a damn leash. Mm -hmm. Probably got a laser watch, too. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the end of part three of the 2020 meme review. A link to the next uh, section in the description.